Humberto? Yes. Introducing Humberto, everybody. Poetry is a silence of the clear. How are you folks doing uh, this afternoon? Thanks a lot to Carmen for having me out at uh, the shop for this event. Appreciate it. I haven't recited in a while, but I'm from the Washington, D.C. area. I used to run an art uh, poetry coalition up there where we had like uh, annual gatherings. Um, I've had some of my work published. I've had some of my artwork in galleries. There's some of my pieces up there on the table right before you enter. Anyhow, I'm just going to recite some pieces for you that I've written over the years. First one I'm starting is one I wrote back in 2004 during that presidential campaign, which now seems to be more effective today than it was back then. The piece is called Campaign. The elephant stomps the donkey. Like any good ass, the donkey rises, baring its teeth. It neighs. Donkey style, of course. Zeke Heil, the elephant roars, its trunk in one arm salute calling forth the tigers of the wild with monkeys in starched white shirts riding their backs. Fists clenched at dollar signs. The attack has begun. Rolling in the dirt, slinging the mud. Who shall claim the aces high of the airwaves? This is one uh, from 2005. It's based upon uh, basically all the databases that are up now online where you can pretty much find out any information about people. It's called The Mark of Cain. The Mark of Cain, accessible via database online, like a colony of ants transmitting transgressions through megabytes, sins of the past exposed, but this is not Jerry Springer, rather reality programming, entrancing little Bo Peep to guide her sheep in the shadow of Big Brother, second-class citizenship stamped on the passport of life, a big black X mark that no detergent can remove from garments soiled in mud, changing the rules of conduct, citizens of technology now under the microscope, dissecting even the smallest of atoms to see how your universe ticks and to exploit. This is from 2003. It is based about the uh, school system, how the government works hand in hand with the school system now for social conditioning. It's called Follow the Leader. Doc, Doc, Goose is where it all started. In those days of social programming where the hierarchy is established at the age of innocence. Government agents separate the flock. Interrogative questions with number two pencils hold your future by the thro throat. This is where the leaders and followers are established. This is where your lot in life begins, a pecking order that will forever shadow you in a straight line behind the chosen. If you desire the ecstatic of social gratification, to climb those ladders all around with ease, all you have to do from the very beginning is follow the leader. These are a couple of uh, poetry exercises I did in workshops online when I was first learning how to write. The first one is called Silence Is. Emptiness, an ever hollow void of landscapes unfiltered into canyons of noiseless sound that only the deaf can hear. What is love? A seed of sickness planted in the belly of desolation like a weed that grows forth, choking the joy one feels, a harvester of sorrow, blooming forth happiness that withers and dies until another seed is planted. Final one I'm gonna do for the moment. Uh, this is called Diary Unbeknownst. Looking back at the pages, I see pictures that tell tales of events gone past, the current reel now in play, realizing my soul lies naked on the beach, alone drawn circles in the sand. It is a journal within all artists keep, documenting the events absorbed by our senses. I see, hear, breathe for this journal unconditionally, keeping records of my life through pain, words, and other instruments of creation. It is a curse of cul-de-sac, 
for I am bound to share all beneath these layers of skin, down to the bone, so others may feast upon my despair. It is a catch-22. Without their hunger, my life means nothing, for like the babble fish, I gorge upon them, as well to sustain my reason for my existence. It becomes the tide, washing away those circles I drew, leaving a remnant of muddy footprints as I pen another entree into my diary unbeknownst. Last one for now. This was the very first piece I ever wrote back when I was 18 years old. It was inspired by uh, somebody I knew. It was called Ode to a Vegetable Man. The vegetable man waits once more, another casualty of the drug war. Government check every month. Now he can afford drugs for lunch. Pays his rent for a cheap, dirty room. Makes no difference, he sealed his doom. Cheap beer and cigarettes is all he craves when all he's doing is digging his grave. Veggie lives on in his fantasy's fable, blasting classic rock as he guzzles black label. Now he bows his head and reaps, knowing this is the light he shall forever reap, having no one to blame for his fame but himself. Thanks a lot.